This is the Living in Bakersfield channel. I am Angel, your local Bakersfield realtor. You know that this is the channel to find out everything about living in Bakersfield, calling this place home, and being a part of this incredible community. With that being said, I'm also a realtor. And we realtors in California, we're kind of reading the room. A lot of y'all are leaving our beautiful state, and it makes total sense. We get it. But what I'm here to do, for those of you that are thinking about leaving California and moving to different states, is I'm here to introduce you to some of my colleagues that I trust, that I know, like, and trust, that I would happily be able to help you call them your realtor in the city or town that you are moving to, or the state. So today, I am going to be introducing you to my colleague and soon to be friend, Lee Brown, and she is on YouTube, she is on Instagram, she is big in the real estate community. And let me introduce you to Lee Brown. She is from Concord, North Carolina. Ta-da! Hello! Hello! So on the <laughs> today. Yes! Did I say it right? Is it Concord or Concord? No, it's Concord. Yankees say Concord. They have their little towns up there from the Revolutionary War and we participated, but we're Concord. We were running farms down here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So tell me, Lee, are you helping a lot of Californians in your neck of the woods, like move from here to there? Yes. In fact, I have two new clients just this week that are coming out of California, one of which is moving their primary residence here. The other one is getting their investment properties safely reestablished in North Carolina. And so I'm very honored to help them in that process. Does North Carolina have like some of the other states like where, because California, we have the property taxes. It's the same, whether it's an investment property or a primary. That's one of our benefits. It helps your bottom line as an investor that there is not a secondary taxation mode. Now, I'm also licensed in South Carolina because Charlotte's area sits right on the state line. And so I always tell my investors who are looking at North and South Carolina, because they're thinking about this metro market, right. South Carolina does have dual taxation. So for an investment property, you pay double the property taxes that you would for a primary residence. So it's one of those balance sheet things you have to take into consideration. I have an investment property in South Carolina and that it hurts. That hurts a lot. <laughs> well, that's why I sold my South Carolina properties and all my investments are in North Carolina. <laughs> well, I do have several colleagues that are doing exactly that. They are moving their investment properties out of California and into other states. So apparently it's very friendly in North Carolina for said move, right? So many reasons to move your investments here. It's not just because we have a growing economy, but when you look at the regulatory and legislative environment, we are a more housing provider friendly climate. And I don't like to say landlord anymore because too many people have turned it into a dirty word, but landlords provide housing for people that don't want to buy. And so right. we have a constitutional amendment in North Carolina that prohibits rent control. So we're very, very grateful that wow. rent control is not a risk here per the state constitution. Wow. And also we are currently working on some legislation to stop the squatters rights that is going on because of course all 50 states are providing some kind of cover to squatters and North Carolina is going legislatively right now to figure out how to stop it. Oh, I hope California takes notes because I don't even know how that became a thing. I mean, not to get political, but like it is kind of political. It was happening during the Great Recession. I handled a lot of foreclosures at that time and they would move into an empty house because they were bank owned and we had to call the sheriff and get them out. But they knew they weren't supposed to be there. The difference then versus now, it started with the CDC during COVID. If you remember in 2020, it was the CDC, not the elected officials. It was that agency that told tenants, you cannot be evicted. So the eviction moratorium came into place and it took the realtors going to the Supreme Court to stop it. But but as you know, a lot of it's just that mind virus that says, oh, well, I can do whatever I want with no repercussions. And now we're seeing it become a huge issue as we deal with the large number of illegal aliens in the country and the word spread so quickly on social media. And it's just not good for our communities. It's not good for housing that somebody could have their property taken by force. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's really becoming a very a big issue in California, especially where, I mean, not only with the COVID rules and the, and the, all of the boxes that you had to check in order to get somebody out, but now like, I think there's a law coming up in our state where landlords cannot ask for anything other than one month's rent. If you're getting a new tenant, let alone trying to get somebody out and what that takes to get somebody out, right. but to get a new tenant, it's just not landlord friendly here in California. So it makes sense that you're, you're hearing right. from a lot of us. 
Well, and one of the, the question my California investors asked me is about the eviction process that you just mentioned, because we all know that as a landlord, as a housing provider, you're going to have somebody at some point who decides actively not to pay the rent. And we have an excellent process here in North Carolina, where if somebody is due on the first and late on the fifth, we have to file two written notices before the magistrate can handle things. And we file the first written notice on the sixth, the second written notice on the 13th. And by the end of the month, we have started eviction proceedings. So because our process does move in a fairly timely manner, it encourages tenants to go ahead and pay their rent because with the shortage of housing, they don't really want to go anywhere, but it takes that risk of getting evicted to make them pay sometimes. And my investors need to know that their investments are going to pay off. And that doesn't make the housing provider the bad guy. North Carolina does not think you're a bad guy if you're an investor. Well, that's why it's called the law. In theory. <laughs> In theory, like I mentioned before, we're a little persnickety about bugs and weather. We're also persnickety about our shopping. So we need Costco's, Trader Joe's, and Whole Foods. And I'm not trying to be a snob. I'm just telling you, speaking for my state, speaking for those of us that love those stores. They're there in Concord, right? Well, they're not in Concord, but they're in a short driving distance. So my mother is the queen of Costco. She treats it as her personal scavenger hunt. So I can't tell you that she will take you on a tour, but she probably would. That's about 15 minutes from here over in Matthews. We have Trader Joe's right about 12 minutes from my house. I love Trader Joe's because it's an adventure. Got you. Whole Foods though is in the money part of town, which is on the south side of Charlotte. There's also one up near Lake Norman. So I can get to a couple of of whole foods or as i like to call it whole paycheck i can get there sure. in about 45 minutes <laughs> isn't that the truth like you know i need this seven dollar bag of plantains or whatever but you know, it's, you know, it is interesting you mentioned that because when people relocate, the grocery store piece can be the first thing you need to do that you don't have the knowledge of. And so we like to go over with our relocating clients how the spectrum works, because if you're on a budget, you have Food Lion. That's a locally owned regional chain that is our affordable grocery store. That's where I shop because I'm cheap. And then you have your midline grocery stores, and that'll be your Aldi's, which I think is the big lots of grocery stores, but has a lot of nice box wines in it. And then you have have Midline, which would be Harris Teeter. That's owned by Kroger. That's a regional name for a very large brand. Publix is a little bit higher. They're out of Florida, but they're the cleanest and most expensive. And then of course you have your specialty places like Fresh Market and Whole Foods. So you're going to have a broad variety. The biggest thing your people should know though, and this is, this is hard to accept if you're coming from California. So bear with me here. We used to be dry here. Now we're not dry anymore. However, when you want liquor drinks, adult beverages, you have to go to the ABC store because it's controlled by the state, the Alcohol and Beverage Commission, but you can get beer and wine at the grocery stores. But if you need a bottle of rum, you know, for baking that rum cake, you have to go to the ABC store. And so that's generally the first adjustment phone call I get from my people of, oh, where am I going to get my bourbon? I'm like, baby, I got you. Here's how it works. And so Are we just talking like ABC store, like the one that's on every corner in Hawaii. No, ABC that's a different store? ABC store. Oh. There is, that's an actual for-profit company. Okay. Our ABC is the Alcohol and Beverage Commission with a state agency. And so <laughs> our state of North Carolina made a grand profit at the beginning of COVID when everybody was having cocktails every night, regardless, because we were all on lockdown for a minute. The state made an extra $700 million through COVID on alcohol. Ain't that something? Whew. Sometimes it's just so easy to play connect the dots on some things. Just it's a little shocking. And you said we wouldn't get political. We're just noticing things, y'all. We we're are coincidence plotters. Yeah, we're just we're just connecting the dots. I mean, you know, I But know you have to be able to do that though, because it affects the value of your property and it affects how things are going to go in the future. So we're also yeah. your real estate advisors who are future casting where your dollars are soundly invested. That's what you call us for. That's right. When somebody is moving there, if they're not doing the investment property, you know, they're just mom and pop, one, two, three banana street in Bakersfield, California, and they want to move Concord. What is that looking like for them? Are they going to have more value in their home or is it going to be an even transfer? Like, what are we looking at there? Well, it depends on obviously what kind of property you're selling in Bakersfield, but people are always excited to find out that our median price point is still around 400,000. So if you're a first time buyer, you still have options. Now, not as many as we would like, 
like because we don't have enough inventory, which is a similar story in your area, but you can get something. And then if you're looking to get something that's larger, more luxury on some land, you'll have all of those options here. But we're very glad that it makes sense for a lot of families. And especially when you look at your property tax situation, we are a very favorable property tax rate state. So a lot of folks find out that their dollars can reallocate and get a little more house for the same dollars. And you can get home insurance here much better than what you got in California because we are, we're seeing a lot of tightening on home insurance, but oh, not yeah. nearly as scary as what you're dealing with in California. So for a lot of folks, that gives them some peace of mind that the primary residence they buy here, they can still even get State Farm. State Farm is still writing policies here. I know you're jealous now. You're ready to move, but you got to take care I'm, of the one baby field. I get it. I'm like, okay, I might be getting a whole bunch of people heading your way, Lee. Property taxes are supposed to be no more than one and a half percent of the sales price. But what happens is over time is they go, oh, Proposition A, it's only going to be 45 cents. And that was in 1989. And then, oh, you know, um, bond measure C. And then, oh, it's only going to be a dollar 26 in your property taxes. And before you know it, property taxes are no longer just one and a half percent of the sales price and people are like what's up what's up what's this what and i'm like yes this is why you vote this is why you pay attention locally but then also when you're talking about the homeowner's insurance that is becoming such an issue in our state because it's becoming a right of cancellation on the contract because people are waiting and delaying and i'm gonna and blah, 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 and they're fiddle farting around with their interest rate on their loan and they kind of move the the homeowner's insurance to like, we'll get to it later on, right? As their lender is like, hey, we need you to get homeowner's insurance. It's becoming a right of cancellation on so many purchases. So it just seems like it's getting harder and harder for things to line up for somebody who's just trying to buy their house here in California. North Carolina seems pretty good. Well, we're interesting here because we do have a rate bureau that helps negotiate those rates with the state commissioner of insurance. What does so that mean? We have a, a third party group of insurance people that always asks for a huge increase in rates. The commissioner negotiates with them, so it's a statewide thing, but it allows our insurance providers to get an increase because we know it's more expensive to provide insurance. That's no surprise to everyone. Inflation yeah. affects everything, hmm. but the commissioner of insurance is able to intervene on behalf of the people and say, we need to look at this incrementally so that we don't hammer people that are in their homes. Because as you know, the insurance attacks hurt most the fixed income people, senior citizens, those who've been in their house a long time. And that might not be you, my new relocating California friends, but if your mom and dad move with you and you put them in a nice little 55 plus community on one level, you're going to want to protect their dollars because it impacts their ability to stay out of your basement, frankly. <laughs> Love you, mama, but no. <laughs> Are there a lot of homes with basements in North Carolina? I'm not a basement. I'm, you know, I always feel like there's going to be dead bodies in there. but that's just me. <laughs> well, see, you're thinking about cellars. Ours aren't really cellars. They're more basements. So what you'll see a lot of here are walkout basements, which are essentially houses on a sloped lot where okay. you can dig out the foundation and then half of it's basically underground and insulated. And then the backside has the windows and the doors and you can do some extra patios and right. it allows for really efficient use of the land. And people love a basement just because it can be the flex space, the bonus room. It might not even be finished and be used for storage. And I wouldn't say there's a lot of them, but there's generally enough in the market at any time that if you need that additional space, we can find you an idea that's got it available. So a lot of people here in the Bakersfield area, they are big on like RVing, right? So they have the trailers and the RVs and the toys or the, the toy hauler type RV, and they want that stored on their property. So we have a lot of homes that are either a three car garage where they can potentially put a lot of the extras in that space. People really crave a, a large side yard so that they can park their own trailer or motorhome or what have you behind their own gate. Is that something that like we would be able to find there a lot? It's definitely possible, but this is where, as you always have that same conversation, it's where your trade-offs, because if you want the larger lot with the space for the RV and you don't want an HOA because the HOA is going to tell you not to have one, well, then it's probably an older home in an older area, which might be delightful, but you might be inheriting lower ceilings and some dated features that you have to do some updates to the home. A lot of our newer homes are on smaller lots that do have very active homeowner associations where you can't
can't bring an RV, but we do have a lot of storage facilities here. So many of our RV friends, they have an RV parking spot at the local storage place yeah. where they do have some covered areas. So if you're very persnickety about that RV, you can still put it under cover. But honestly, it's it's just a, it depends, right? That's the fun part of real estate. It really just depends on what you need. We can probably find it if you hunt for it. And if you're right. willing to take something else off. Well, and, and it becomes like, are you even going to RV up there? I mean, California, it's, you know, we're a giant state, right? So it makes sense that people travel, you know, and we're right, Bakersfield's right in the middle. So we can go north, south, east, and west, and we haven't even left the state and we're only two hours from home. So it makes sense that it's so trailer and motorhome you know, uh, friendly here. But when you live in a different part of, you know, the country, like you might not even need it. You might just be I mean, able to do it. Right. There's a day trip to the mountains from our area, two hours. You can be in Asheville to tour America's Castle, the Biltmore House. You can also be on the Appalachian Trail. You can see so much. It's gorgeous in the Appalachian Mountains. And in three hours, you can be at the beach. And then you could pick every beach environment you want. The one where I have a beach home is Ocean Isle Beach, three hours and 15 minutes, very quiet. But if you want the good times, you go to Myrtle Beach, which we call the Redneck Riviera. That's just a few more minutes. But you can get there and get a hotel. However, if you're that RV person, you will find a lot of RV parks everywhere. And for, I guess, the Zakoa people, the KOA, they have their own little clubs and memberships. We got you two friends. There's places everywhere. And another you place- have that intercoastal waterway up in your, I, I just learned about that. I was talking to another colleague in Myrtle Beach. His name is Elliot. And he was telling me about that ICW, that intercoastal waterway that goes all the way from like all the way, all the way up north to Florida. And I've had some friends who have taken their boat the whole route just so they can see the different states. It's really cool. It's a great place to fish and shrimp and yes. and you can live different. on the water, but not on the water, like on the ocean. Right. You can still have waterfront property. I'm like, what? Yeah, if that's your jam, I mean, I need to look at the ocean, ocean, but I'm second row house, so I have to look between two houses to see the ocean, but I'm fine with that too. Well, it's just fun to listen to you talk. Does everybody in uh, Concord have an accent like yours? Because you're a local, right? You grew up there. I am a local, but there's not many of us left because we've become a melting pot from all over the place. And frankly, okay. I do have a heavy accent because I grew up on a farm. So I grew up when it was still country here. It's not that country anymore, but it's fine because I get out of jail free with an accent, except that it can also be because I've known the police chief since the first grade. So that might be why I have to get out of jail free card. I don't know. Oh, you could insult me all day with that sweet accent. And I'd be like, I think I just got gutted. I think something bad just happened. I mean, it happens. <laughs> So one of the things that, you know, Californians get a really bad rap when we move to other communities and it's because, you know, they want everybody to have everything green and environmental. Anyway, what is some of the best advice that you can give a Californian that's moving there? Like, is it change your plates? Is it don't tell anybody you're from California? What, what would you tell your clients? I mean, frankly, we're just so nice here. We only talk about you behind your back. So you won't know <laughs> that we don't like you. They're very aggressive. Oh, it. oh and boys either they're putting postcards on people's windshields, you know, go home, Californian. I haven't seen that here, but the best piece of advice I've given to my California folks is just remind people that you've promised to take the pledge not to vote for four years until you figure out why it's great here and get out of your old habits of pulling one lever for one party. And maybe you'll come here and realize that there's a wonderful purple spectrum out there of great people all over the place Praise before the you go making those decisions. And I think that's really just good advice for any of us. If you change areas, slow down your judgment and get curious about why you like it, why it works. And when that curiosity takes over, people are very enamored of curiosity and they'll welcome you in, especially if you go sit down at the local brewery and drink a beer and, and be cool. The last couple that I moved here, they were primary residents. They got here a couple months ago. And when I talked to them, they had that same fear. They said, will anybody like us? And I said, well, it, you know, it depends on how you act. And they said, well, we just don't want to be the last ones out of California. And I said, I don't think you'd last ones out, but if you tell people that you will win them right over. So that's become their line at the breweries. And they are the favorites within about 25 seconds of saying, we didn't want to be the last ones out. Right. So you can all steal that line too. That's my gift to you as you move. <laughs> Did we talk about the price of gas in your neighborhood? Did we you talk didn't, about that? It, it went up this week. So we're at 339 now. Shut the front door. I mean, I can't even, I think I just paid 459 yesterday. Oh, well, that's better than I thought. I thought y'all were at like $7 a gallon or is that just what well, the media said? 
Yeah, that's probably down in like some of the beach communities. San Diego, oh. I know, pushes six and six and a half, and you know some of the other areas up in the Bay Area, they're definitely up in the sixes. But it's just crazy town. I'm in the oil capital of the freaking country of the state, and like we're being charged. I'm like, it's in our backyard. Why are we being charged? It's right there across the street. Why because am I there's being an charged? attack on truth, and there's an attack on the way that things have been done unnecessarily. I mean, my daughter is in a petroleum engineering program in Texas. That's her college. She's in Texas Tech. Uh -huh. and she's studying petroleum engineering because she wants to make it more efficient. She likes that it could be even better, which I think is the attitude we should be taking because you can drive costs down and do things cleaner and better without throwing everything out. And her professors have said they need more kids in these programs because the climate change agenda has really gotten so many kids to think that it's hopeless and there's no future for any of us yeah. that they're not even signing up to make it better. So there's such an opportunity if you're the optimistic mindset. Yes. And I think that's what we like to bring to the table here in North Carolina is there's wonderful things we've done in the past and wonderful ways to go forward. And we don't have to just do what somebody else told us. And that's probably why our gas is 339. But then I become the old person that says, well, back when I was a kid, it was 79 cents a gallon. And you literally could fill your car up from the change up under the seat. And my kids think I'm lying. But kids, I'm not lying we could do that once upon a time. <laughs> From the what up under the seat? The change up under the seats. Didn't you ever drop change in your car as a kid? Oh yes, the change. Oh. You could scrounge around. You could find a cup fifty cents. You could get almost a gallon of gas, and you could make it to and from track practice before you got home and admitted you'd let the car go empty. <laughs> and it's all talking to you. Hurry, hurry. Well, now it tells you you've got one mile, and I'm like, oh gosh, where's the where's yeah, the next one? I've only got one mile. Language. <laughs> so what is the main industry? And you mentioned the Biltmore, so I want to touch a little bit on that, but what is the main industry in Concord? We're a city right outside of Charlotte. So we're around 150,000 people. So we've got a good size to us, but a lot of our folks here do commute in and out of Charlotte. Charlotte is the second biggest financial center in the country after New York City. So Ooh. for years, we've had Californians go back and forth when we were Nations Bank and you had Bank of America on the West Coast and then they merged, what's that, 20, 25 years ago? Yeah, it's been a while. Cool. We've had a lot of intercontinental traffic for a long time and we continue to be a center for financial services there's a trading floor here and everything in and around that space now in addition there's a lot of technology google has a lot of offices here apple has offices up outside of raleigh and now here lately we've been increasing our manufacturing capacities we've got chewy is located here now and anybody with a dog or a cat that gets a chewy box that's coming out of north carolina one county north of here in rowan county and we also have under construction right now a one billion dollar Eli Lilly facility manufacturing pharmaceuticals right here in Concord which they've already got some employing going on over there and as the facility gets finished that's going to be a boon. Red Bull is here we have Carmax here we have pre-gel here which makes uh gelatos just saying so there's all kinds of wonderful companies in and around here you just never know what you're going to find so <laughs> the biggest thing anybody will see if you google the area is what we call the mega site which sits about 45 minutes north of concord and that is where toyota is spending 14 billion dollars on a, an ev car manufacturing facility and the parts and the batteries and then boom sonic is doing some jet engines there as well but 14 billion is what they're investing in the site and and right now the housing crisis is pretty insane because of inventory and we're just at the edges of that red crisis area which is another thing that's improving our values because many people from california say you know what i've already been driving 45 minutes i'm fine with that so you live here drive there for those really good jobs so it, it's pretty exciting stuff and if you google you'll see duke energy is here that's one of the largest energy providers in the country there is a fortune 100 company here with an office a headquarters a people base and we're very proud of our educated workforce and all the options oh you can't stand it can you look fortune 100 in what's so funny is we fly under the radar people think of big cities and they don't think of charlotte they don't think of concord of course nascar comes up right there we are the yeah. home of nascar the charlotte motor speedway okay. and it used to be much bigger before we got out of the southeast but that's a that's a whole different podcast about how they destroyed nascar by making it corporate and took it away from the people oh. <laughs> so we have this cool thing called this move me so i'm gonna see what it would look like i'm gonna do a couple of cities in california so hang tight you can see this right I can, and I'm, I was just, I thought you were going to bring up Buck Owens because he's my favorite person when I think of Bakersfield. You know, I love the Bakersfield sound. Fun, fun fact, 
Fun fact, Miss Lee, Buck Owens and I have the same birthday. I thought you were going to say you're related to him and I almost fell out of the chair, but birthday is also cool. <laughs> 24, 49 miles. So, so it's a, it's a chunk. It's, it's a drive. On paper, this move but, would be on par with our current location. Okay, let's see the number, cool. Lee. What number are we looking for here? Ooh, okay. On average, it generally, it generally ha hangs out in the 70s, depending on the city. 87 is good. Okay, so it's going to talk about housing affordability, quality of life, job market, and living affordability. So here we go. Winning. So, Bakersfield is on the left. Concord, Concord is on the right. Look at this. Okay, home prices, same, same. Property taxes, eh, roughly the same. Home appreciation in Bakersfield, it's 3%. It's 1.7. I don't know about that. that I don't know if that's right, but we'll just, we'll cut them some slack for not being local realtors. Right. Uh, uh, price per square foot, that's about average. Ours is right in Bakersfield, it's about on average about 224 right now okay so it scores lower bigger scores lower okay education y'all are higher health and fitness whoa what happened there that's weird See, now, i don't know about that but if you don't like big hospital that might cause it to go down but we're the third largest medical area in the country we have two large conglomerates here with so many medical offices and locations but if you're looking for homeopathic we don't have as much so maybe that's what it is okay good to know weather y'all are we, we have it's we have close to 300 days of sun here in bakersfield oh yeah you're gonna have a little it's it's raining outside right now but the rain makes the garden grow so i'm just gonna point that out it's not all like right. seattle rain though i mean it's one day a week it rains probably all right look at your air quality and our air quality right row ours is way not a good number but yours is beautiful look at that ours is great commute. we talked about the commute lovely accessibility look at well you got a lot going on over there and then culture and entertainment you guys are close to like you know richmond virginia like how far is that from y'all it's about five hours just north and then you scoot a little bit further you're in dc so you've got driving access to the nation's capital of course museum central and then oh, right here in charlotte though we have a wonderful full-time symphony orchestra we have an opera company we have a dance company and then of course there's all of the subsidiaries that come off of that my son is actually in the youth orchestra with the charlotte symphony they're very good and i'm not just saying that because i'm a mom they're really good <laughs> But we, we love the arts here and it's one of the best things about the area. You can literally see concerts all the time, whether it's classical or very edgy up and coming young people. That is fantastic. Look at your your job growth. What were you just saying? Look at that. Ours wow. is negative. <laughs> 2.91. Hello. Future job growth index. You're at 88. Good night. Yeah. So uh, Concord scores higher than Bakersfield. State income tax. Look at that. Bless. And ours is coming down too. We're headed for zero. So we're moving down every year. We've got a state surplus right now and they are focused on increasing opportunities and decreasing taxes. Way to go. Californians, Californians know nothing about a state surplus. Yeah, yeah, and you're not going to with the latest proposal in Assembly Bill 1840, girl. Woo! Oh, we'll have that conversation. We'll have that conversation. Okay, transportation. So Concord scores higher than Bakersfield in living affordability. So this is, we don't need to find an agent. We've got one right here, but isn't this fun? Isn't this, so you're- That's really cool, actually. 87, yeah, I love that little tool. It is just one of my favorites. I love playing with that thing. So yes, let's talk about that bill. That's the California dream for all. Is that the one that you mentioned? Yeah, the one that says interest-free 20% down loans to illegals. I mm -hmm. just don't think that we should be giving dollars to those who won't follow the laws. Correct. And the, I think he's an assemblyman or a, a senator or something in Fresno thought that was a brilliant idea and everybody just patted him on the back and I'm like, excuse me, I don't, I don't think so. I am a taxpayer, that is my tax dollar, going to somebody that broke the law in front of my veterans, in front of my first time home buyers that could use that help. The parameters for it are just crazy. The young people, I mean, we've got our next generation is giving up on the American dream. So we're gonna offer it to those who are absolutely publicly flagrantly violating our laws. That doesn't make sense. No. And if we've taken care of all of our people, we'd have a different conversation, but we haven't done that yet. If there's extra, we'll consider it, but probably not. <laughs> There's no way <laughs> we'll consider it. We didn't commit to it. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, we'll talk about it maybe, but not. Okay, Lee. So tell everybody where they can find you. Cause I think I had your channel up. Let me go back to sharing my screen because it's just so fun. I had your channel up earlier. I have lots of channels, but in the spirit of what you're doing here, we have the We Love Concord channel where you can learn about what's happening right here in Concord housing. And then of course there's my speaker channel here. Where I do a lot of education in and about real estate. So if you are somebody who's, you're not 
not even ready to sell your house in Bakersfield. You could learn things about real estate so you can go take Angel out for lunch and y'all can talk about the things that are going on and then you can find ideas for here. We like to talk about real estate. It's just our, our dream space. And I grew up here. My family goes back here to the 1600s. So I've watched so much change here and we just love bringing new people in and letting them be a part of our story. It's just so much wonderful fun. I love that you have two channels. That's got to take some work. I've only got one. That's a lot of work. Can't imagine doing No, but this is a wonderful idea to create some peace of mind for those that are relocating. So I need your permission to copy this idea, Angel. Can I copy this for my channel? It's all yours. I all right, here we go, sister. <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun. Go for it. I just want to help people understand that because I think there's so many people that feel like they're a tree and they cannot move. And there are some, there are, I have friends that are doctors. I have friends that are fire. I have friends that are, you know, in, in industries that our state still needs. And I understand that they can't move. They're being paid well. They're doing good by the community. I get it. But there are some that they can't. They're just afraid. The devil you know and the devil you don't know. Like, well, we're in this like abusive relationship with Gabby and the state. Well, at least we understand, right? But I think when you open your mind and go, you know what, what's it like in North Carolina? How would it work? What would, I, what would I do? Do they have my church? Do they have activities? What are my kids gonna do? That's why we're doing it. Oh, well, we do have your churches. You forgot to ask about that. There's literally one of everything. So if you are a mosque or a synagogue or a Baptist Catholic, Lutheran, non-denom, you name it, there are multiple versions of them here. Cause this is a very openly discussing faith-based area. That's so even if somebody's not involved in the faith life, they gonna get asked, where do you go to church? And if you say nowhere, they'll say, okay, well, you want to come with us? You're going to get invited. It's just a, I love that about our area. But the way that you're couching this, just, I'm just thinking about the people I was with on Friday who are in the process of trying to make the decision. They haven't pulled the trigger yet. Their youngest is still at home. She is about to start high school and they have massive concerns about the curriculum that she's going to be faced with in California. And they're not even in the public schools. They're in a private school where the curriculum looks a lot like the public schools and they don't want her to believe she's less than. They don't want her to believe she's an oppressor. They don't want her to think that her body parts determine anything about her future. And so we were talking about the stresses and challenges of moving. And I had to remind them, I'm like, She's going to adapt faster than you are because we are such a melting pot in this area. When she shows up in the high school, she'll have friends in about five minutes and there'll be one from everywhere. Because I, I do love that about my kids' friend groups. It literally looks like the melting pot or an old Benetton ad from the 80s. And they really just enjoy each other because they're all used to a, a changing cast of characters as we've grown because we keep adding schools. And so it changes assignments. And if the kids can fit in, the adults generally will figure it out too. But a lot of the folks that you will talk to are probably concerned about whether or not their kids will fit in. And I can tell you right now from the passing herds that come through my house after ball games and on the way to the pool, you're your kids will find a home more quickly than you think and nobody will look at them twice except in the way that kids always look at at each other twice which is human nature and we just got to teach them to be kind to each other and roll on i have helped some people i said you know they're not very sports minded and i said you're going to need to learn like the yeah. sec and the what's the other one sec and the the acc so right now this is march madness it started yesterday in carolina <laughs> yesterday so if you move here you're going to have to be either a Carolina fan, which you should know, Chapel Hill was founded in 1789, the, the oldest university in the United States, public university, or you have to pick North Carolina State, which upset Texas Tech last night. They are our little Cinderella team, and they're kind of grumpy about always being second fiddle to Carolina. Too bad. And then you have Duke, which is evil, and Duke is the University of New Jersey in North Carolina, and nobody likes them unless you're a super snooty person. But you have to pick one of the three. Okay. And you can tell which one I am. I'm a Tar Heel. Let's go Heels. But you better pick one, just like you got to pick a NASCAR driver. So even if you never intend to go to racing, you should probably look at it just enough to say, well, that one's cute. I'll pull for him. And that way you can fit right into any conversation. <laughs> You're absolutely proving my point that like, if you don't know that, I like anybody that was watching this, they need to be taking 
copious notes on what you just said. Go back and watch that again so that you know how to assimilate because if you don't know what you just said, you're just like big old target on your back. It is funny, but it's those things that seem so basic and so common, which are the, a way that you fit in. It's back to the grocery store conversation. When you know the differences between Food Line and Harris Teeter, it allows you to have a generally basic conversation when you're meeting some friends for the first time. Yep. And then to also know you, you might be judged if you shop at Food Line. I don't mind being judged because I also shop at Marshall's, but right. you, you have to know your audience. And that's one of the keys to relocating happily. I'll also mention in the sports vein, we do have the Carolina Panthers here. It's rumored they're part of the NFL, even though they never win anything, but you could also be part of a losing team here. And the Carolina Hurricanes are our hockey team. They're up in Raleigh. We don't have Major League Baseball yet, but we do have a lot of single A and triple A around here. If you're a sports person, you'll find a way to fit in. I love it. I love it. Now tell me, how far are you from the Biltmore? Because we have the Hearst Castle, which is like about a two and a half hour drive. Hearst Fancy. Castle uh, is nothing compared to the Biltmore. I know, it's, it's like, oh, it's how like sweet. There. Country oh. Cousins, we have, it's the Vanderbilt Estate. It was built as their summer home in the 1800s. It is right at two hours from here. Okay. And I gotta tell you, if you love Downton Abbey, they occasionally have the traveling Downton Abbey uh, exhibit with all the costumes. And I love Downton Abbey, it's wonderful. But you can do the architectural tour and get really behind the scenes. But the general admission tour, I mean, you see the t indoor bowling alley and swimming pools and their rooms and their furnishings. And at Christmas, ah! <laughs> It's so amazing at Christmas, but there's a winery on the grounds. And so if you think California wines are great, then you can compare it to North Carolina wines. But I got to tell you this little factoid, you might not know this, okay, California great. would have no wine industry if not for North Carolina. My people in North Carolina saved the California wine industry and you're welcome for that. Because in the 1800s, when they were getting the, the Napa Valley area going, yeah. the, the vines weren't making it. And so what they did was they grafted from our muscadine vines in North Carolina, which is a sweeter grape. They took some of those grafts because it's very hardy and it allowed them to survive a really rough season. And so all of your wines and your blends in California trace back to our mother vine from the 1500s in North Carolina, which is still alive. So you can see the mother vine in North Carolina at the North Carolina coast in the Outer Banks, which saved the California wine industry. And while I'm talking about wine, yes, Temecula wine is better than Napa Valley. Just gonna lay that out there and see if it explodes the internet. Oh, Temecula is good. We've got all of Paso Robles, um, all the wineries in Paso Robles are in our backyard. It's like an hour and 20 minutes for us to go to Paso Robles, Tobe James. The nicer wineries are just a spitting distance away. I'm gonna have to do some research on that because Californians, you know, they're gonna claim that you're wrong. They're just oh, gonna be like- oh, Actually, they'll tell the truth about it because they, they, you would have lost everything if not for us in the 1800s. Go look at that, baby. It's great, great information. I love it. Thank you so much, Lee. I cannot wait to hear from people that have seen this, that are like, I need to work with her. How do I get a hold of her? So tell us all the things. How can they find you? All of it, give it to me. Because well, I know, I know you sold North Carolina. Well, if you're in Bakersfield, you call Angel first so she yeah. can connect us and we'll be a match made in heaven. And if you call me direct, you need to let me know that you saw me on this show so that we can bring Angel into the conversation because logistically to move, it's gonna be far smoother if she knows what's going on where you're buying and I know what's going on where you're selling. So we love being a team to help you manage the stress of moving. Yes. So if you reach out to me, you can come through any of my social channels or watch some videos, leave a comment. We love having conversations. My team and I are too busy to ever pester people, but we are here to provide top professional service. So you can always ask us questions. You're never bothering us until you're ready and then we'll clear the decks when you come to town get you educated first and then we help you look for a house because we believe in education and guidance as you're making a big family decision because we want you to be happy with what you decide to do and just like angel does we we welcome all those conversations and if you say you want to move we'll help and if you say you don't then we love you anyway so we're going to take care of you coming and going and that's what we do here so you can go to leebrown.com and look at houses or you know just click on any of the links that angel can provide to you and then when you're thinking about your bakersfield home just make sure you reach out to her before you call anybody else, before you call your brother-in-law or your friend from church, because you should remember that the people that you're really close to personally might have a hard time differentiating the personal friendship and the professional friendship. And that's what your professional will do for you like angels to call her first. You're so sweet, Lee. Thank you so much. I am like blown away, like day made at this 
conversation. I am so glad that I got to introduce you to my channel and I pray that it lands on your channel. It's going to be great. I will see you around town if you're watching in Bakersfield and if you are going to Concord, North Carolina, I look forward to handing you off to this beautiful woman. Well, thank you so much. And friends, make sure that you tell a friend to watch Angel's channel and tell a friend about these opportunities so you can be educated. And then when California drives you crazy, come on to North Carolina. <laughs> and we'll go to an NASCAR game and we'll learn sports and we'll go have some wine. There you go. It's all good. I appreciate your time today. I cannot believe how lovely this conversation was. It blew my mind and my day has been made. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me on and I wish you all the best.